кривое догорание Тихо улетит в грани в этот час Я хочу, чтоб ты была со мною Но тебя со мною нет сейчас Я хочу, чтоб ты была со мною Я ношу в кармане с того дня, за чего же ты была хорошей, Галича была любовь твоя, за чего же ты была хорошей, Галича была любовь твоя, тихий вечер, теплый вечер, и я такие вечера люблю. Earned Value Management, or EVM, is a handy project management technique for monitoring the cost and schedule performance of your projects. It is used within PMI's project management body of knowledge, but is not exclusive to it. EVM works by comparing your actual and budgeted resource expenditures to show variance from your original project plan in terms of cost and schedule. Using project management software such as Microsoft Project 2010 makes it easier to work with EVM. However, you can of course use the technique without software since EVM is based entirely on simple mathematics. In fact, all you really need for EVM is a budgeted project and a little bit of patience. But surely it's obvious when a project's within budget and on schedule. Well, consider this. We're a third of the way through a project and we've spent 80% of our budget, which according to our plan, we shouldn't have done until two thirds of the way through the project. So now we only have 20% of our project budget left for the last six months. Do we have a problem? Well, we don't know until we look at the numbers in more detail. With what we know at this stage, two scenarios could explain how we've managed to spend 80% of our budget so early on in the project. Scenario 1. We've gone over budget. We may, for example, have spent more money on achieving the scheduled work for this part of the project. Scenario 2. We're ahead of schedule. We've delivered 80% of what was budgeted for in the project plan. However, it could be that it simply took us less time to do so. By doing an EVM analysis, we can establish which of these two scenarios is valid. EVM can show you whether your project is on budget using cost variance and on schedule using schedule variance. Cost variance is the difference between what you plan to spend for a given work breakdown structure item and what you actually spent based on having lost or saved money. Schedule variance is the difference between what you plan to spend and what you actually spent on a specific work breakdown structure item based on being ahead of or behind schedule. EVM can also give you an estimate of how much the total work on a given work breakdown structure item is likely to cost. Note that estimate at completion is calculated based on the assumption that current spending patterns will be maintained for the remainder of the project. Note that Microsoft Project calculates these values for you, and later in this video, I will show you where you can find them. However, as we saw earlier, you don't need special software to perform an earned value management analysis. In fact, calculating schedule and cost variance and estimate at completion is really very easy. To calculate schedule and cost variance, you need three pieces of information. Planned value, PV, is the total approved budget for a specific work breakdown structure item. 
It is also commonly referred to as budgeted cost of work scheduled. Actual cost, AC, is the amount of money it actually takes to complete a specific work breakdown structure item. The term actual cost of work performed is also used and means exactly the same thing. Earned value, EV, is the approved budget for the actual work completed on a given work breakdown structure item during a specific period. You will also hear it referred to as budgeted cost of work performed. Note that just as with planned value, the cost for earned value is drawn from the approved project budget but is set against actual work performed, whereas planned value assumes that all scheduled work will be carried out. Cost variance is calculated by subtracting the actual cost, i.e. what you actually spent, from the earned value, i.e. what you were budgeted to spend for the amount of work you completed. A positive cost variance means you are under budget, which is of course a good thing. A negative cost variance, on the other hand, indicates that you are over budget. In the broader context of your project, this may not prove to be such a big issue. However, it is useful to be aware of it so you can take any necessary corrective action. You can also calculate a cost variance percentage which puts the figure for cost variance into context and is a handy indicator particularly for stakeholders who aren't intimately familiar with the project budget. To calculate a cost variance percentage, divide the cost variance by the earned value and then multiply the result by 100. Again, positive values are good and negative values are bad. There is also a cost performance index which gives essentially the same information as your cost variance percentage, simply in a different format. To calculate the cost performance index, divide the earned value by the actual cost. Note that you don't need a cost variance percentage or a cost performance index, but they are handy indicators you can use as and when needed. Schedule variance is calculated by subtracting the planned value i.e. the budget for the scheduled amount of work to be performed from the earned value, i.e. the budget for the amount of work you actually performed. A positive schedule variance means you are ahead of schedule, which is typically a favourable scenario. A negative schedule variance, however, shows that you are behind schedule. Once again, in the broader context of your project, this may not prove to be a problem, but it is better that you know you are behind schedule to avoid any nasty surprises. You can also calculate a schedule variance percentage and a schedule performance index. As with cost variance, you don't need either of these indicators, but they can be handy in terms of putting your schedule variance into context. To calculate a schedule variance percentage, divide the schedule variance by the planned value and multiply the result by 100. As always with EVM, positive values are good and negative values indicate something is wrong. To calculate the schedule performance index, divide the earned value by the planned value. To calculate the estimated total cost for a given work breakdown structure item or estimate at completion, Simply divide the actual cost by the earned value, then multiply the result by the total budget for the project. Remember that estimate at completion is by definition a simplistic gauge and it assumes that current spending patterns will continue till the end of the project. It is April 2012. A rich and sophisticated, albeit very old-fashioned and rather austere gentleman from Eastern Europe has just purchased a new home. After his former residence in his home country burned down in mysterious circumstances. In 2013, 
it will be his turn to organise his family's annual ball, which takes place every year in November. However, the family portraits that hung on the walls of his previous home were destroyed in the fire. Since it would be very embarrassing for the rich gentleman to welcome his wider family to his new home and have no portraits of them, he has decided to commission a painter to paint new ones. He will pay the painter 150 euros per day and has estimated that each of the 20 portraits needed will take about 20 working days to complete and should be ready just in time for the family ball on 8th of November 2013. On 1st of September, several months into the project, the rich gentleman, who has been away travelling and has just flown back, asks the painter for a status update. Now, according to the project plan, at this stage the painter should have completed four portraits. Given that it was estimated that he would need about 20 working days to complete each portrait and that he has paid 150 euros per day, our planned value for the period between 1st of September and the start of the project is 12,000 euros. However, in actual fact, the painter has only completed three portraits, which gives us an earned value of 9,000 euros. It turns out that the reason only three portraits have been painted so far is that two of them took 30 days, i.e. 50% longer than scheduled to paint, giving us an actual cost of 12,000 euros. First, let's look at the cost variance. According to the budget, three portraits at 3,000 euros each should only cost 9,000 euros in total. However, as we've seen, the actual cost was 12,000 euros, since two of the completed portraits actually took 50% longer than scheduled and cost 4,500 euros each. This gives us a cost variance of minus 3,000 euros, from which we can derive a cost variance percentage of minus 33%. In other words, the actual cost for the work done is €3,000 more than the rich gentleman originally planned to pay for it, which means that the project is now 33% over budget. Now let's look at schedule variants. Although the painter has completed three portraits budgeted at €3,000 each, representing an earned value of €9,000, according to the plan, he should actually have completed four by this stage of the project, and the plan value is therefore €12,000. This indicates a variance from the baseline schedule of minus €3,000, from which we can derive a schedule variance percentage of minus 25%. In other words, the painter has done €3,000 less worth of work than the rich gentleman had expected by this point, and is therefore 25% behind schedule. In this part, we're going to look at the same Pictures for a New Home project that we looked at in the first part of the tutorial to give you a basic understanding of how you can work with Earned Value Management in Microsoft Project 2010. So let's just remind ourselves of the essential details of that project. A rich and slightly sinister Eastern European gentleman has just hired a painter to paint 20 portraits of various members of his family. The portraits need to be ready by 8th of November 2013, the day on which the gentleman will host his family's annual ball. He has agreed to pay the painter 150 euros per day and has calculated his budget based on the assumption that each portrait should take the painter roughly 20 working days to complete. Each portrait should therefore cost about 3,000 euros and his total budget is 60,000 euros. The project is scheduled to start on 30th of April 2012 and to end on 8th of November 2013. So let's get started. 
after opening Microsoft Project, the first thing I'm going to do is set the way Project calculates earned value. So if I go to the Backstage view, click on Options, then click on Advanced, and scroll down until I get to Earned Value Options for this project. What we're interested in here is Default Task Earned Value Method. Now Project has two ways of calculating earned value, percentage complete and physical percentage complete. To give you an example of percentage complete, let's say we have a task scheduled for eight days of work. That task is considered to be 50% complete after four days. So the earned value is 50% of the approved budget for completing the task, i.e. 50% of the planned value. An example of physical percentage complete would be, say, a task that concerned making 6,800 copies of a brochure. That task would be physically 25% complete once 1,700 brochures had been printed. So the earned value would be 25% of the budget for the 6,800 copies or 1,700 times the approved budget for a single copy. However, for the purposes of our Pictures of a New Home project, we want earned value to be calculated on the basis of percentage complete. So let's leave that as it is. The setting below, Baseline for Earned Value Calculation, concerns the baseline against which you want project to calculate earned value. If your project has multiple baselines, you can select the appropriate one from the drop-down here. However, as we are only going to use one baseline for our project, and the system will automatically select that baseline as the default once we have created it, we don't need to make any changes here. However, one thing I do want to change is in Schedule, I want to change the way new tasks are created. So as you can see, they can either be manually scheduled or auto-scheduled. Well, I'm going to change it to auto-scheduled. Note that we can make other changes in the Options section, but to keep things simple, we're going to leave them as they are and assume, for example, a standard five-day working week with eight hours per day for a total of 40 hours for the week, although these are things that you can modify. So we click on OK. Now we can get down to setting up our project. So let's click on the Project tab and click the Project Information icon to bring up the Project Information window. I'm going to change the start date of the project to 30th of April 2012, and so I don't get any nasty surprises with my pre-prepared example. I'm going to change the current day to the 29th of April, okay, which is the day before the project is due to start. Of course, for a real-world project, you generally won't want your current date to be in the past. So now, let's click on OK, and now we can enter our tasks. You can, of course, enter your task directly onto the Gantt chart view, but you can also transfer a list made in Microsoft Word, which is what I'm going to do here. So if we open our Word file, as you can see, I've already organized these into task and subtasks. So all I need to do is copy, and then if I go to this square here and paste, as you can see, thanks to the formatting I used in Word, Project has organized these correctly into one task and 20 subtasks. So that has now kept the correct formatting for Microsoft Project. So let's select all the subtasks and go to the Task tab. There, if I click on the Information icon on the Properties ribbon, we can change all the subtask duration to 20 days as per our project plan. So I click on OK. Now let's link all of our subtasks by clicking on the Link Tasks icon on the Schedule section of the Task ribbon. Okay. The idea 
here is that the painter will complete each portrait before moving on to the next rather than working on multiple portraits in parallel. So it's for that reason that we linked all the tasks. Now we need to add the painter as a resource. So let's go to the view tab and select resource sheet from the resource views section of the ribbon. Here we can directly enter our painter. So we're going to call him Istvan, and we're going to set his standard rate to what was agreed, i.e. 150 euros per day. Note that we're not going to change anything else. For example, he won't be paid a special rate for any overtime he works. Okay. So now we can go back to the Gantt chart view. And here we can assign Istvan as a resource by selecting all the subtasks and going to the resource tab and selecting assign resources from the assignment section of the ribbon. And here we see Istvan's name and all we have to do is click on the assign button and he'll be assigned to all these subtasks. So now we can close this window and all that remains to be done is to level the resources. So we'll click on level resource and click on level now. So I'm just going to adjust the magnification here so you can see the Gantt chart a little bit better. And I'm going to scroll along to the right just to bring everything a bit better into view. Okay, so now we've got our project set up as per our plan, we can set this as the baseline. So if I go to the project tab and click on set baseline and then click on set baseline here. I'm going to click on OK now because there's nothing there that I want to change. But as you can see, you have a choice of baselines, but we're just going to have one for this particular project. OK. Our baseline is now set. If we now go to the Gantt Chart Tools Format tab, we can make the baseline visible on the Gantt Chart. There you can see the baseline in grey below the normal task view. Note that both currently reflect the same dates because we haven't yet deviated from our baseline. So let's imagine now that it's the 1st of August and the project has already been underway for a few months. The rich gentleman has just returned home after several months away on business. To his dismay, he finds out that just as the painter was about to begin work on the project, he had a nasty accident and broke both of his arms. Therefore, no work at all has been done on the project since the scheduled start date of the 30th of April. So let's go to the project tab and click on the calendar icon underneath status date on the status section of the ribbon. Here we can enter 1st of August 2012 in the window and then click on OK. And the status date is now set to August the 1st. Of course, it would be nice if we could actually display the status date on the Gantt chart itself. So let's do a right click over the area of the Gantt chart and select grid lines from the menu. Then we scroll down the list until we get to status date and select that. Then we can select the line type from t the type drop down and we can choose a color for our line. And I'm going to choose purple because I think it's a nice visible color. OK, so now I can click on OK and we can see that our status date is now indicated by a purple line on the Gantt chart. In basic terms, then, we are now looking at the project as if it was the 1st of August. So let's take a look at our earned value data. If we do a right click on this space on the top left hand corner of the task area and select more tables, we can access the earned value table. Just going to adjust the view to make it a little clearer and reveal some of the columns that I want to draw your attention to. So here you can see columns with names that you will recognize from the first part of the tutorial, i.e. planned value, earned value, actual cost, schedule variance, cost variance, and estimate at completion. Now, as we know, 
The artist has not been able to do any work because he broke both his arms. So, just as we expect, the column for cost variance, which as we know is based on the difference between earned value and actual cost, is empty. No work, work at all has been done, therefore no value has been earned. However, in terms of schedule, according to the project plan, the painter should have completed three portraits by now and begun work on a fourth. The planned value for this period is therefore 10,050. That is 3,000 euros for completed portrait and 1,050 euros for partial work on the portrait of great aunt Catherine. On the plus side, the rich gentleman only agreed to pay the painter for work done and isn't obliged to pay him for sick leave. However, on the downside, we can clearly see that the project is behind schedule at this point. We could now go to the Earn Value Schedule Indicators table to see the Schedule Variance Percentage and the Schedule Performance Index, but there isn't really a need at this stage because the situation is very clear. The project is 100% behind schedule. How the rich gentleman chooses to deal with this situation is up to him. He could, for example, hire an additional painter to work in parallel with this fund. He could also hire an assistant for his fund to help him work faster. Or he could simply decide that it wouldn't be so bad after all if only 17 out of 20 family portraits were completed in time for the family ball. Now, let's look ahead to 1st of January 2013. The rich gentleman had finally decided that he would simply let the project run its course and hope that the painter would work faster in order to catch up the lost time. Let's first go back to the main Gantt chart view by right clicking on the square in the top left hand corner of the task list and selecting entry. So it turns out that great uncle Caligula's portrait took 60 days rather than 20. So let's change the duration to 60 days. And I'm just going to select the reason so I can get rid of this green triangle. Okay, the first five portraits have nevertheless all now been completed. So let's select them and mark them as complete by going to the Task tab and clicking on the 100% icon on the Schedule section of the ribbon. Now we can change the status date to the 1st of January 2013 by going to the Project tab and selecting the calendar icon underneath status date on the status section and changing the date in the window to 1st of January 2013. If we now look at the Gantt chart, we can see that according to the baseline, which is indicated by the bars in grey, eight portraits should have been completed by the current status date of 1st of January 2013 and a ninth should be very near to completion which is clearly quite different from the actual situation so let's go back to the earned value table and see how we're now getting on If we look at the plan value column, we can see that according to our original plan, 26,400 euros worth of work, i.e. eight portraits and partial work on a ninth portrait, should have been completed by now. In the earned value column, we can see that we have done far less work than that, because the budgeted value of the work we have actually done only comes to 15,000 euros. Now, as we know, Schedule variance is calculated by subtracting the planned value from the earned value. So an earned value of 15,000 euros minus a planned value of 26,400 euros should give us a schedule variance of minus 11,400. And if we look at the schedule variance column, we can see that that's indeed the case. 
We'll have a look at the Earned Value Schedule Performance Indicators table in just a minute to get a better idea of just how that delay in schedule relates to the project as a whole. Before we do that, let's look at cost variance. Cost variance, as we know, is calculated by subtracting the actual cost, in this case 21,000, from the earned value, which as we have just seen is 15,000 for the current reference period. This gives us a cost variance of 6,000 euros, minus 6,000 euros that is, which is the amount we see in the cost variance column. Okay, now we've seen the variance amounts, let's take a look at the two earned value indicator tables so we can get additional intelligence on our project's performance in terms of cost and schedule. Again, we go to the top left hand corner of the task area and do a right click on the empty space there. We can select from more tables earned value schedule performance indicators. Here we see some tables that we saw on the main earned value table such as plan value, earned value and schedule variance. However, in addition we see columns for schedule variance percentage shown as SV percentage and also schedule performance index or SPI. We can see from the schedule variance percentage that we are 43% behind schedule. And we can see from the schedule performance index that our schedule performance is 57% efficient. If we now look at the earned value cost indicators table, once again in addition to columns from the main earned value table such as plan value, earned value, cost variance, estimate at completion, we also see columns for the indicators i.e. cost variance percentage and cost performance index or CPI. Looking at the table we can see that we are 40% over budget. Looking further down the cost variance percentage column we can identify the culprit as the portrait of Great Uncle Caligula which is over budget by 200%. This as we know is due to the fact that it took three times longer than scheduled to paint. Looking at the cost performance index, we can see that our cost performance is currently running at only 71% efficiency. This is caused entirely by the extra time the painter needed to complete Great Uncle Caligula's portrait, which was completed with only 33% cost performance efficiency. So let's go back to the main entry view. Now that the rich gentleman has this information on cost and schedule, he can decide what, if any, corrective actions need to be taken. Let's assume he has a word with the artist and suggests that, in order to make up lost time, he can make the remaining portraits three quarters the size, which means he can now complete them 25% faster. So let's select those last remaining portraits and change their duration to 15 days and mark them as 100% complete. Finally, let's move the status date to 21st of September, i.e. the day after the new project end date of 20th of September. Now we can take a look at what the cost and schedule variance will look like at the end of the project. First, let's look at the earned value cost indicators table. The first thing that should be immediately apparent is that the cost variance percentage and the cost performance indicator are both positive. This means that our project has been completed under budget, which is a good thing. However, we should bear in mind that the rich gentleman 
did agree to a change in the specification of the deliverables to be produced by the project. In other words, savings were only made by the client's willingness to accept reduced versions of what was originally budgeted for. So how did we do then in terms of schedule? Let's take a look at the earned value schedule indicators table. Here we can see that we ended the project ahead of schedule by 10%. So in the end, the rich gentleman was able to get his house nice and ready for his family ball in November 2013. Although, to be fair, poor Istvan did end up being paid less money for the whole project. So that concludes this tutorial. You should now have a good understanding of earned value management and how to work with it in Microsoft Project. Thank you for watching.